Come on, ink. Let's go. So for this problem, we've got one half, I think is what it was, with the negative x. Let me make sure before I keep going. Yes. So you have this here, and they want you to graph this, OK? Now, in WebAssign, when you're doing the um, review itself, it gives you five points, right? But the three key ones are these ones in the middle, OK, where you have negative 1 for x, 0 for x, and then 1 for x. Those are the three key points that I was talking about. And just for reference, I'm actually going to show you your note sheet. So I hope not too much of the test pops up. Um, I'm going to try not to scroll down so far, <laughs> but it is scored differently. So there are 14 questions. And so problems 1, 2, and 3, 9, 10, and 11 are worth eight points. And I will use this rubric to grade them, OK? The rubric will be at the top of the test. You don't have to memorize it. <laughs> Four and five are just like, did you select the right answer or not? And they're both worth five points. And then six, seven, and eight are also that same type. Did you click the right answer, yes or no? but those are worth four points each. And then problems 12, 13, and 14 are worth 10 points each because those have the most amount of work that you have to show, okay? And so then that's the rubric there for those um, three problems. So here's your note sheet that you get, okay? So that I don't wanna go any further, but that is going to be your note sheet. So notice that it tells you the graph of a to the positive x exponent contains these three points and it tells you exactly what those points should look like right so as long as you can identify a you should be able to give me those three points okay and then of course i have your formula here telling you what all the letters represent this formula here telling you what all the letters represent you've got your definition of logarithm which allows you to change the forms over right you've got your change of base formula you've got the one-to-one -one property for exponentials one-to-one -one for logarithms You've got some of those other log properties that may or may not pop up. Remember the base and the base cancel, so you just get x. The base and the base cancel, you just get x. Remember that when it, there's no left, nothing there, it's a base 10, right? And when it says ln, it's a base e, okay? So those are on there as well. Oops, I don't want to go far. And then these two properties with the product and then the quotient. And then finally, you have your growth and decay model. And so it tells you what each of those letters represent. And then it tells you down here that if R is positive, it's a growth model. And then if R is negative, it's a decay model, right? So that should be all you need for the test. Um, but I'm going to actually use that information for this problem here. Now, the thing is, is that I cannot tell you what the key points are just yet because I don't, mit I don't match the form in that formula. It told me if my function was this, that I would have these three key points. So notice the difference between my function and this. And it has nothing to do with the fact that there's a fraction. It don't care if there's a fraction, OK? What it has to do with is that the exponent is not the same as this exponent, right? This exponent is just x all by itself, whereas this exponent has a negative on it, doesn't it? But you can get rid of the negative by taking the um, reciprocal of whatever's inside that parentheses, okay? So if I take the reciprocal of this, this becomes 2 over 1, but then now it's a positive x, right? And then I could just write that as 2 to the power x, can't I? Okay? And then now it's pretty easy to tell that the a is just a 2 now, okay? And just for teaching purposes in case you happen to see this on the review or on the test if you had this right in order to get rid of that negative you have to take the reciprocal of four and then it would become positive but what is the reciprocal of four if you write it as a fraction and then flip that fraction over what would you end up with one over four, exactly. Because four is actually the same as four over one, right? And then reciprocate it and you just flip it over, okay? So as long as you remember these two things, a fraction will turn to a whole number to get rid of the negative, or a whole number will turn into a fraction to get rid of the negative. You should be good for the key points, okay? 
So now that I know what my base is, it's two, I'm going to have the point negative one and the reciprocal of two, which is one over two. I will have zero and one always. And then I'll have one and the A value itself, which is just two. And that should be all you need to graph this guy. One, two, one, two. And so I have negative one and a half. I have zero and one, and then one and two. And that is enough for me to draw this here. And now you have the graph, right? So you must show me these three points, okay? If you don't, you get a lot of points taken off, okay? Um, now in the computer though, it asks you to fill in the chart and it does have a negative two and a positive two, doesn't it? So they have some extra points in their chart than I do in mine. So I already know what I would type in the box for negative one. I already know what I would type in the box with the zero. And I already know what I would type in the box for the one. But what do I type in the box for the negative two and the two? Now that you have your function simplified, you're just gonna plug in that with negative two. And you can either, if you can do that in your head, fantastic. If you cannot, you can always use your calculator, right? So you do two raised to the negative two, and it gives you one fourth. And here, two raised to the two, that one we should know, right? That's just regular four, okay? So if I go to my review, I can type in all those Y values. So for this one, it was one fourth. For this one, it was one half. For this one, it was one, two, and then four, right? And my graph needs to look like, yeah, like this one. That one's got the zero one, right? The negative one and a half, and then the positive one and two, okay? Now, same thing with this one. Um, this one's a little bit harder. You won't be able to give me the three key points, but you can still fill in the table, okay? So. For that one, I would literally just type in all of those values and see what you get. Because it has this extra bits, right? In my formula, did I have all those extra bits? No, right? So let's go to the camera. So I can write this down and then do this table. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And so for this one, we're just going to use our calculator a whole lot. We're going to say 2 raised to the negative 2 plus 1 and come down from the exponent and then hit plus 5. And I get 11 over 2, okay? which is about 5.5, .5, or it is 5.5. .5. Now I'm going to do the same thing by copying that and just changing the negative two to a negative one. And I get six. I'm gonna do it again, copy that, and go change the negative one to a zero. And I get seven, copy it again, change the zero to a one. So on and so forth, right? You just keep going in this manner. So uh, copy it again. And plug in a two and I get 13. Um, I just highlight it, I go up with the arrow and I highlight it. So I had to hit it, go up twice. Because if I go up once, it highlights the answer. But if I go up a second time, it'll highlight my last entry. And then if I hit enter, it actually copies it for me and I can edit it. Okay. And then you just use your arrows. I cheat though, I don't like to like go back, 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 back to get all the way over there. So what I do is I do second and back and it takes me to the front and then I just go to the front two times and it gives me there. It's just quick ways to get there. Otherwise you just be back, 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 back until you get in the right spot. Okay, let's see. I know those, I'm not gonna fill it in, but well, why not? Six, seven, nine, and then 13. So which one of these has those points? Negative two and 5.5, .5, that's about right. Negative one and, nope, that's not right. 
zero and seven though. This one goes through zero and seven, so does that one. I think it's this one though, because the numbers get bigger, right? So gotta get this one. Now we've got some more. So number three, let's write that one down. Now you do have equation kind of like this. I mean, it doesn't look you know, like that exactly, but on mine, I do not have this directions. I do not tell you how to solve it. I just tell you to solve it, okay? And whichever way you choose to solve it is completely up to you. Whether you want to use the one-to-one -one property or you want to use a definition to switch it around, that's completely up to you, okay? Um, or if you want, what's the other one where they do the LN on, or the log on both sides? Whatever, however you want to solve that is completely up to you. There are three different ways to do it, okay? I personally chose all the time to just use the definition, right? That's my favorite is to use a definition. Unless there's two exponentials or two logs, then that's normally when I do the one to one, okay? But since I only have one exponential expression, this is just a regular constant, I'm going to change it using the definition. So I'm not following the directions of the review. They're not going to know, right? <laughs> but on the test, you do have options. It does not tell you which one, which way to do it. So I'm going to do log, but what is going to be my base? It is not going to be three. Ten? Ten? No. What is the base of the exponential? One third, so that has to be my base. The base has to be the same, right? That does not change. The base is the base. Then the other two numbers got to swap sides. So if the X was with the one third and the nine was far away, now they've got to switch positions, okay? So now the nine is going to be with the one third and the X is going to be far away on the other side, okay? And this is just numbers. I should be able to type it in my calculator. I just can't type it in like that right that's when we have to fix it and so i think somebody said i don't know i think i accidentally said ln <laughs> but that's how i usually change the base i do ln of one of those numbers over ln of the other number which number is the one that's supposed to go on the top the nine and then the base has to go at the bottom right b and b base at the bottom and so then that i can type in here so let's see, a uh, fraction first, and then my LN button and a nine, close that up, go to the bottom, LN, and I'm gonna do one fraction three. I do have to click to the right to close that up. But once it's in there, it looks a lot like my paper, right? I can just hit it and it tells me that X is negative two, okay? Let's go see what number four is going to look like. Okay, that's number four. Number four. This one does say one to one, and I left it there because that is the way you have to solve it. Um, I mean, there is another way, but I showed you if there was two exponentials or two logs, you want to use the one to one. It's the easiest, fastest way to get there. So if the bases are already the same, the only way this expression equals that expression is if the exponents are also the same, right? So that just means that this 6x minus 4 has to equal that 8. And then from there, you're just solving for the x, right? So just add the 4. I will get 6x all by itself, now equal to 12, and then divide by the 6. And so then get that x equals 2. And the original equation has no logs, so I do not need to check it. I only need to check my answers if the original has logs.
Okay. So then now the next one, number five, looks a little different. This is one of those ones, there's a whole bunch of, but this is one of the problems that um, you won't have to show any work on. I think five, six, seven, eight, nine, all of these four or five problems you don't have to show work on. Now, I don't give you the example over here like this problem does. <laughs> they give you an example. What I give you is the actual definition, right? So when you see it in one form, you need to switch it over to the other form. And the directions literally tell that. Write this logarithmic equation in the exponential form now, okay? So when I do that, I am going to have to swap it. And for the exponential form, it should look like this, right? That's what it should look like. It should look like an exponential equation. What is the base going to be of that exponential equation? It's a six, it looks like a B, right? <laughs> but yes, it's a six. And then where do the other two numbers go? Two is the exponent. Two is the exponent and then the 36 has no choice but to be over there, okay? <laughs> Biggest thing is base stays the base, the other two guys swap, okay? Now I think we're gonna have to do another one in the reverse which is not so bad because we already did it on one of the equation problems. So this one says 16 to the three fourths equals eight. And they want me to change this one to its logarithmic form. So I'm gonna change it to its log form. In the log form, it has to look like this. So you've gotta have a log in there and then you're gonna have a base, an argument, and then something on the other side. What's going to be the base? The 16. And so then what's gonna go next to the 16? The eight. And then the three fourths gets kicked out, right? Okay. So those you don't have to show any work for, um, you'll probably be able to just look at the choices and you'll already see which one's in the right order, right? Um, those are not, you don't need to show any work for those problems. But if you click the wrong answer, you don't get any points, okay? So make sure you click the right guy. So I'm writing this one down. And this one just says, use the logarithm properties to simplify it. Okay, that's all it's asking us to do. Use the log properties to simplify this. How do you want to do that? It's all numbers. So if I wanted to type it in my calculator, I could, but there's also a real fast way to do this problem as well. If I go to my test and I look at these properties, look at this one right here. This one right there fits exactly what I'm doing. Isn't my base a pi and my base here is a pi? And so then the answer is going to be what? Just whatever was in that exponent, right? So in this case, what's my exponent? So it's just going to be six, okay? This base and this base will cancel each other out. Now, if you brain fart on the test, right? <laughs> it happens. Um, you can do the change of base formula, right? You can do ln of the top guy over ln of the bottom guy. And if you type that in your calculator, you will get the same six answer, okay? Ln of pi raised to the six. Oh, I forgot to hit the fraction. Okay, it wasn't too late. And then pi. Is that exactly what's on my paper? And if I hit enter, it tells me it's six, okay? So if you forget the property, it's okay, you can do it in the calculator. Now let's see the next problem, this one, log 4.5 of one. That one, I don't know if there's a rule for it. Nope, I don't have a rule for it. This is the end of my rules. And I do not have any rules that show me a one anyway. So we're gonna do it the way we did the last one then. We're just gonna stick it in the calculator, okay? So then I'm gonna do ln of the argument over ln of the base. And what do I get? Let's see, ln of one 
over ln of 4 5 and I get 0 the ln of 1 is always 0 it has to do with this point this point is on the um, exponential function right and the inverse swaps it so this point is on the inverse right so if that's x what do I get for y zero okay not that you have to remember that but okay. the calculator will tell you let's see what number nine looks like I think number nine is one of the last of these just pick the right answer problems Okay, so we've got five, and then the whole exponent is log base five of two. I can use the property. What does the property tell me? Mm -hmm. This base and this base are going to just undo each other, aren't they? And so what am I going to end up with? Just the two. So these guys basically wipe each other out. The log as well, it's just all gone. <clears throat> so same thing here, base and base the same, they're gonna wipe each other out. You see why there's nothing really to show? I mean, I'm writing, there's really nothing to show. <laughs> I'm just writing the problem and then the answer. Okay, here's a good one. This one as well, I did not erase the one-to-one -one statement because that is exactly what you have to do. Now what's inside those little arguments may be different for you on the test, but, or even this is might be different, but not different from each other, but different from five, okay? They do have to be the same, the same base, whatever number it is, has to be the same before you can apply the one-to-one. -one. Okay, and since these bases do match, I know that this argument has to equal the other argument. And then that's not too hard to solve, right? You just get x equal to two. Now here though, you do have to check it and please do check your answers, okay? You have to make sure that this is not gonna make your argument zero or yeah, zero or negative, anything zero or negative is bad. So three is a three, that's not gonna change. But when I plug in two here, what do I get? Three, which is not zero or negative, right? So it's good. Make sure you double check it, that your arguments are not zero or negative. Now we have to graph a logarithmic equation. And this one will tell you too, you make sure you show the three key points. Um, here they wanna know the vertical asymptote, they wanna know the domain, and then they wanna know the x-intercept. So I'm gonna do the problem like the way they want it on the review, but then I'm also gonna show you how to get the three key points. All I ask is for the three key points in the graph, okay? I don't ask you for other stuff. So for the domain, remember that your argument has to be bigger than zero. It cannot be zero and it cannot be anything negative. So it has to be bigger than zero. And here my argument is just an X. So this is literally the domain. If they wanted in intervals, would be from zero and everything bigger to infinity. And then for the three key points, remember the three key points for the logs, they're backwards from the three key points of the exponential. So it's not negative one comma one over a, it's one over a comma negative one. And then it's not zero one, it's one zero, and it's not one a, it's a one, they're backwards, okay? What is the base here though? Mm hmm A is seven, this guy right here, okay? So then my three points are gonna be one over seven and negative one, one and zero, and then negative, no, not negative, just seven and one. Uh, 
Um, what else does it ask me for? I think it asks me for the x-intercept. So the x-intercept happens when the y is zero. Don't I have a point here where y is zero? In these three points, do I have a point where the y value is zero? I have this point right there, right? That is the y-intercept or the x-intercept, sorry. Only because the y value is zero, so this x value is my x-intercept. So I do know this answer. I do know this and they do say to enter interval notation. So I'm gonna put that in there real quick. And then the vertical asymptote, I don't know where my vertical asymptote is. I have an idea, but I'm gonna graph this first. So let's graph these. We have um, one, Oh gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one and negative one. So I have one seventh, which is probably real close to zero, but not quite at zero and negative one. And then I have the point one and zero. And then I have the point seven and one. And so that's not a point. I don't know why it came out dark right there, but it goes like this, kind of, right? <laughs> And then it goes downward like this. So that vertical asymptote is actually right here on the y-axis. So that's at x equals what x value? What's the x value right there at that vertical line? Zero. Again, I don't ask you for all that. If I'm going to ask you, I'm just going to ask you for the three key points and the graph. But I think mine should look like this one, seven and one, and then one and zero. These are more of the ones where you're just going to pick the right answer. There's really nothing to do. So I wrote down the two problems. So there's my two problems, 12 and 13. And they just want you to convert them into the, this one is in a log form. So they want you to convert this one to exponential. And then that one's in exponential form. They want you to convert it to a log. So it's just like the other ones, but here we have E's and decimals and all that, right? So before I can switch it over, the definition doesn't have LN in it. This is the definition. This is the definition that you'll see on the test, okay? That definition does not have LN, does it? So I cannot use it right now. But I do have another rule on the test, a property, sorry for changing. But it does tell me that the LN can be written as log, can it? It tells me that the LN can be written as log base E. So I can change the way it looks and then I can go ahead and use that definition, okay? So I am gonna change this LN into log base E first and then that will allow me to apply that definition, okay? So when I go to swap over the form, the base is what? E and then what becomes its exponent? The decimal or the fraction? Mm -hmm. The base stays the base, but the other two guys swap sides, right? So instead of the 5, 6 with the E, it's now going to be this decimal with the E, which means the 5, 6 gets kicked out, right? And that's what I'm going to look for in my choices is this equation here. Now over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna change it. And it does look like this form. It's just this decimal has a dot, dot, dot in it. But it does look exactly like that. So I'm gonna switch it over to a log. It's gonna be a log with what base? Mm 
What is the base in this equation? It's still E. And then the other two numbers got a swap, right? So now the 403 point something something, it's gonna go over here. And then the six gets kicked out. But this, if you look at your choices, is not an option, okay? However, this is an option. Are they the same? They are. So just be careful when you swap it over, we have to remember that log base E is the same as ln. You have to remember that. If you don't remember it, you have to at least remember to go look at the top, right? To go make sure. So for here, we had E, we had this one. This was the equation that we had for number 12. And we had this one for our equation for the second one. Okay. Be very careful. There's a whole bunch of, they're all different kinds of positions. So be very careful that you choose the right one. Okay. Fourteen. We have ln of one over e two. It says use the properties to simplify it. Um, one of the properties that we can use is we could do the one that we need for. Actually, do you even need to use properties? Can you type that in your calculator? Do you have this button in your calculator? And you can type that right. So yeah, we could just put it all in there. Ln fraction one over my E button and my power is a two. And then I'm just gonna close that up. And I think the answer is two, negative two, yep. See what the next one looks like. Okay. So this one does tell me number 15. It does tell me to write, um, use the one to one property. And it makes sense because I have LN on both sides, right? We have logs on both sides. So we know that the one-to-one -one property says that this argument would have to equal this argument. And then I would try to solve it. Now it is just x squared and not x squared and an x, right? If you had an x squared and an x term, you would have to get it equal to zero and factor it. But because it's just x squared and there's no other x term, you can choose either get it equal to zero and factor it, or you can do the square root property, right? You just have to remember if you choose to do the square root property that you get two answers, right? Plus and minus, okay? So make sure that if you do it that way, you remember the plus and minus. I still have some people on the test forgetting about the plus and minus in both of my classes, not just this one. So if you throw in a square root out of nowhere to get rid of that little square, you have to remember that there's two answers, okay? And so then I get eight. Then you have to make sure that both of them are actual good solutions. If I plug in positive eight here, don't I get 64 minus 18, which is positive? And if I plug negative eight in there, what do I get when I square it? Positive 64 minus 18 is still positive, right? So you have both of them as your answers. But make sure you check them because it could happen that you only one of them work or neither one of them work. And then the answer is no solution if neither one works. 16, this one's a good one. It says log 6.1 of x. So this one says rewrite the logarithm as a ratio of common logs or natural logs. And I want you to do both. So remember, I've got this formula right here that shows you how to change it into the common logs and it shows you how to change it into the, logger, the natural logs, okay? So we're just gonna use this rule. 
So then that means this can equal log the argument over the base. And then for the LNs, it's the same thing. The argument has to go over the base. This one's the one with the common log. And then this one's the one with the natural logs. So make sure when you go in and type the correct one, right, where it belongs. Okay, so this one would be fraction L O G X L O G six point one. Oops. And then this one would be fraction L N X L N six point one. Oh, I didn't type in that one, right? Eight, comma, negative eight. type these guys in there. Oh, I forgot this one too. What do we get there? Two, and two, and zero, and six. So log base 16 of eight, close it up equal to three over four. And then this one, six raised to the two equals 36. And then that one was two. This one, what do we get for that one? Negative two. Just so when I hit the enter button, we'll know if we got them all right, right? Okay, so number seven is log base four of 13 B to the eight and C. This one says to use the log properties to expand it. This one, um, you might have one like this, but I don't think it has a square root, but we'll, we'll do that one just because it's on the root view. But if you have one like this, either one, the one with the fraction or the one without the fraction, both of those, you do not need to show any work because I showed you the shortcut, right? So it is possible just to look at it and just know what the answer is, okay? So I don't require you to show the work on those two problems, okay? So for this one, how many factors do I have? How many things are being multiplied together? It's three of them. It's the number, the B, and the C, okay? So make sure you identify the number as its own guy, okay? Basically what you wanna look for is bases, bases and exponents. I could write a little one there and a little one there, can't I? Right, and so you have three bases, don't you? So when you expand this, everybody's gonna have the log four, everybody. All three of those bases are gonna have the log four. And then you're gonna put the bases here. So the 13, the B and the C. The exponents have to go in the front. Okay, so that means this one would have to go here, this eight would have to go in the front there, and then this one would be imaginary there. Now, if they're all multiplied, then what symbol do I use, plus or minus? Right, if I had a fraction, only the ones at the bottom would get the minus, okay? Uh, can you say that again? Sure. If it's a fraction, only the bases that have only the bases that are at the bottom would have a minus in the front. So for instance, let's say the problem was this. Right? I still have three bases, right? But this guy would have a minus in the front because he's at the bottom. Okay. We do have a fraction, except this fraction has a big square root. So it's a little bit different on the review. Okay, oh God, I gotta use that button a bunch. So I'm just gonna go boom, and then plus, uh, plus, oh, I didn't 
equals, oh well, I can fix it. So the first one had a one in front. They all have log base four. And then the first was 13, then an eight, P, and then a C. Okay, there we go. This one's different. It's got a fraction. And not only that is I have a plus inside that square root. There's no log property that allows you to break up a plus in the argument. So one thing I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna write that uh, square root as an exponent. So a square root is actually a one half exponent. And then we're gonna split this up. So we're gonna have ln of the top, which is six, and it doesn't really have an exponent, so I don't need to put a coefficient, right? It's like an imaginary one. Then am I gonna put plus or minus for the bottom part? Minus. minus. This one does have a exponent, doesn't it? So that one half does have to go to the front. And then this x squared plus three is inside the parentheses. You cannot break this up. They can only break them up if they were multiplied together or if they were divided, right? You cannot break it up if it's plus or minus. So then that means this is the answer. I cannot do anything else with it. I don't remember if I just have one of those conversion ones or two of them. I think I have one of each. I think I have one where you expand it and then one where you compress it. Okay. Oh God, what did I do? I did ln of six and then minus one half ln of x squared plus three. Oh, no, that's not right. Down plus three. There we go. Now it looks right. Okay, now this one is to condense it. I am going to keep writing them on paper before I put them in the computer. Just because I'm going to upload this, right? So I want to make sure all the problems are on here. And I'm going to go ahead and write number 20 as well. Both have the same directions. It's just one's a little bit more complicated than the other. Oh, no, there we go. So for the top one, here's the million dollar question. Is it going to have a fraction? When I combine it to one log, is it going to have a fraction? How do you know it's gonna have a fraction? Correct. As soon as you see that minus, you know somebody's going to the bottom, right? What about number 20? Is that one gonna have a fraction? Yes, because that one has a minus as well. If there's no minuses, then please do not select any of the answers with fractions, right? If they're all plus, you should not have anything at the bottom, okay? So I do have a minus, which means I know I am gonna have a fraction. Now they're all just log base, right? So I'm not gonna put a base here, but I know I'm gonna have a fraction. Remember the rule, the positive logs will go at the top, the negative logs will go at the bottom, okay? So I know an X is gonna go at the top because it's positive here. And I know a Z is gonna go at the top because of the positive there. But does X get an exponent? Does Z get an exponent? Yes. It gets a seven. And then the one with the minus is gonna go at the bottom. So this Y is gonna go at the bottom, but what's its exponent gonna be? Just five. Be careful because I get a common error and people will put negative five. The minus tells you where it goes. The number tells you the exponent, okay? 
No, if you did, if you treated it, if you would have written it like this, x, um, y to the negative five, and then z to the seventh, you could get that, but this is the same thing as this, because doesn't the negative exponent make it go downstairs? Okay. But you won't have a minus and then a negative down here. Okay. I always tell people, don't, don't account for something twice. Somebody tried to trick me. I don't know if you ever, I saw a stupid thing where they do, I can prove to you they have 11 fingers and they go one, two, we'll skip these three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11. And I'm like, no, you counted three twice because you counted it here, but then you counted those numbers again. So don't do that, okay? <laughs> don't account for something twice. If you're gonna account for the negative, because you're putting it at the bottom, then don't account for it when you get the exponent, okay? Only account for each thing one time. Okay, so the second one has a minus, so I know it's gonna have a fraction, but all of these have log base two, right? So that means out here, I'm gonna have log base two. And then let's start thinking. The positive people are these two, right? These are the two positive logs. So I'm gonna have X with what exponent? Two. two, and then I'm gonna have the Y with what exponent? One fifth. And then I'm gonna have, this one's the negative one though. So that one's gonna go downstairs. And what exponent? Five. Five. This will not be one of the choices. All of the choices will have some kind of radical in them. Why? Because this guy right here, is the fifth root. So that's actually x squared and then the fifth root of y. And this is what your answers are gonna look like, okay? So make sure you be careful with that one. Let's go see what Weber did. So for 19, I think they make me type it in, though I don't have multiple choice. Yeah, they make me type it in. So we're gonna do log and then a fraction. And what do we have? X, Z, raise the seven over I, raise the five. Oops, forgot to go downstairs. There we go. And then over here, we had this thing. So I had a two there. And then inside, I had a fraction. And what did we have? We had x squared. And then we had a fifth root, this guy. So fifth root of y. And then z to the fifth. There we go, now that looks right. Okay, we're getting into some more of those equations. So let me write those down, at least a couple. So again, on my directions, I do not tell you a specific way to solve these equations. You just go for it, however you wanna do that. So I'm gonna do 21 and 22 are the ones that I wrote down. So this one's 21 and that one's 22. What does your brain tell you to do? There are two ways to start this and then like two ways to continue it. I know, it sounds weird, but you have to pick something, okay? What does your brain want you to do with this? Your options are to either turn this into one giant log like you did the other ones, or to move this guy over there. Which one do you want to do? You wanna add him over? So since it's minus, we're gonna add this guy over to the other side. That's a good option. That's what I would have chosen, <laughs> but that's me. 
once it's like this, don't you have a log and a log? And we already know that one to one property. So that means that this argument has to equal that argument. And then you're already done because X is already by itself, right? Okay, now what about the other one? The other one, I have two choices, but it's either the way the book was doing it or the way I was doing it. And the book was trying to apply the inverse on both sides of the equations, which I thought was a little confusing. Um, I just like to switch the forms over. So if you switch the form over for this one, um, what would be the base? Uh-huh, so it would be what number or what letter? It would be five, and then what's the exponent going to be? And then the x gets kicked out. And so you pretty much know what x is, right? What is five squared? 25. And if I try to plug that, oh, I forgot to talk about it. But if I plug this back in there, is my argument going to be negative? If I plug 17 back into the 21, no, it's 17, right? So it's good. I boxed it too soon. The 25, if I plug it in there, is it going to be negative? No, so that's good too. You just got to make sure because you never, you never know. Sometimes you get used to not checking them and then all of a sudden one of them's bad, right? Okay, let's see here. We've got four, six to the X equal to 20. And then for 24, we have five e to the x equals 76. So I'm gonna do those two first. So I wrote them down there. Both of these are just like, like the very, I think first or second problem we did. Where is it? Um, this one. They don't have an exponential equal to a number, right? And we just switched over the forms. These are both exponential equations equal to a number. There's an issue though with both of them. And that's that the exponential bit, the base and the exponent part is not by itself, right? It's not by itself. Over here, I have this four in the front. And over here in this exponential piece, I've got this five in the front. You cannot swap the forms over until the exponential junk is by itself, okay? So I have to get rid of that four and I have to get rid of this five before I can keep going, okay? So for here, we're gonna divide by four and we get five. And then I can switch the form over. So this becomes a log with what base? Mm -hmm. And then what would be my argument? And then the X gets kicked out. And I can type in that calculator. I just have to switch it using that change of base formula. So let's see what that's going to be. LN of five over LN of six. I get this decimal. I'm only going to round it to like three. So about 0 0.898. Same thing on number 24, it's got the exponential. I wanna switch it, but there's a five that's causing an issue. So I'm gonna get rid of it by dividing. And so I have this. And then when I change that to an, a log, it's gonna be log with what base? Yes. And then what will be the argument? 15.2. And so the X gets kicked out. This is just LN. Remember, log E is just the LN. So I don't need to convert it. If I did convert it, you would still get the same here, just FYI, okay? But you can remember that that's just LN and just type in LN of 15.2 and you get that X is about 2.721, okay? If you didn't recognize that log base E is LN, and you did it exactly the same way you did this one. Your fraction would look like LN of the 15.2 over LN of E. 
Now it's just E all by itself and it's making you put an exponent, right? So what exponent is it gonna be? If it's just E by itself, it should be a one exponent. So if you forget that log E is LN, you can do the change of base and you get the exact same answer, okay? Okay, let's see what number 25 looks like. Jeez, how many problems are there? There's a bunch. 25 and 26. You want to get a good grade on your review because it counts right as a homework. So I'm going to go over these two problems, but they're not on the test. They like the longest problems ever. <laughs> and they're just different. I don't think we've even talked about 26 yet. You might figure it out on your own, but we hadn't talked about it. But I think it was in your homework, if I'm not mistaken. So these two problems, they were probably in your homework when we got to that, I forgot what section it was. I think it was 4.5. 4.4, 4.5. The one was just nothing but equations. Okay. You might have seen these in that homework assignment. Two totally different techniques. They are not on the test. They're just not. Okay. But we still want to know how to do them for the review. Okay. So for this one, you cannot change it. There's an exponential on this side and an exponential on that side. And I would try to do one to one, but you can't make this base match that base, no matter how hard you try. Okay, so the only other option I can do is just to use a logarithm on both sides. And you could pick whatever logarithm you want, but you could do log base three or log base eight or screw it all together and just do whatever log you want. Okay, so for me personally, I choose ln just because that's a button in my calculator. So I take the ln on both sides. Then I'm going to use the log property that says that your exponents usually go in the front as coefficients. Right? So then this exponent is going to go to the front, and this exponent is going to go to the front. So it becomes x times ln of 3 equal to x squared times ln of 8. And as weird as this looks, you have to remember that ln of 8 and ln of 3 are just numbers. So if you had 3x on the left hand side and 8x squared on the right hand side, you would have a quadratic, wouldn't you? And it's the same thing, I have a quadratic. So I have to get this thing equal to zero. So I am gonna minus this term over. And so then I have zero over here. Oops, I wrote the wrong number there. Should have been a three. And then you have to factor it. It is only two terms, so I can only take out what they have in common, and they have an x in common. So I'm left with x ln 8 minus just the ln 3. Then you have to set each factor equal to 0. So the x gets equal to 0, and then all of this parentheses stuff gets equal to 0. Over here, it's already solved. I already have my solution. Over here, I have to solve for x. So I get x ln of 8 now equal to ln of 3. It's just a number, so I'm going to divide by that number. And I get x is ln of 3 over ln of 8. If they want the exact answer, there you go, right? But if they want the decimal answer, we have to actually plug it in. And we would get 0 0.528. So like I said, it's different than what we've seen before, but it is still possible to do. But it's not on the test, not this one. I'm trying to think of when I've seen, I don't think I've even seen that in calculus. So don't think that scenario is gonna come up too much where you're gonna have to solve an equation like this. However, I have seen this pop up before. Okay, so this one we'll definitely need to do.
Now, I don't remember if you remember way back when, but we had a whole section talking about quadratic types, right? This is one of those quadratic types. We used it when we solved something like this. And I told you that as long as the exponent gets doubled, right, then it's a quadratic type. And if you're going to use substitution to solve it, you can. You just have to remember that you're subbing for the middle guy. If you're going to use the quadratic formula to solve it, that's fine, but it's not going to be x equals the formula. It's going to be whatever this is, the middle guy, equal to the quadratic formula. Do I have a double exponent? I do, don't I? So this is a quadratic type. And so if I choose to use the quadratic formula, all I have to remember is that this is what I'm going to put in front of the whole formula. Okay. So if I do the formula, it's going to be negative B. What is B? Negative 7 plus or minus the negative 7 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. So I have to remember it's either the X that equals this. 49 minus 48 is 1. So I get 7 plus or minus 1 over 2, which means I get 3 and 4, I believe. Right? 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by 2 gives me the 3. And 7 plus 1 is 8 divided by 2 gives me the 4. So I have two equations then. I have this equation and I have this equation that I have to solve. And so I'm gonna swap the form for both. This becomes log base E of three equal to X. This one becomes log base E of four equal to X. And remember log E is just LN. So you get these two answers, okay? If they want decimals, then you can give them decimals. I'm pretty sure, well, these are not on the test, so it doesn't matter what's in the choices because it's not gonna be none. But let me go see the directions for these two problems. Oh God, I got, stop typing the stupid things in. Uh, 25, that's four, what? I got a decimal for that one. Oh, it says enter answers, it says approximate to three decimals. Okay, good. Did I type that in right? Yes. And then this one, 24. What did we get? 2.721. And then this one, we got, yeah, result. So we got 0 0.528. And here it does say uh, approximate to three decimals. So I do need to get those, those decimals over here. So let's see, ln of three is 1.099 because a six will change the eight to a nine and then ln of four is 1.386 so those are my two decimal answers so let me go type those in 1.099 1.386. Now you should be able to follow these as examples because they're only going to change those numbers. Okay, the ones that are in red on my screen, those are the only things that are going to change about the problem. Let me write down both of 27 and 28 so we can talk about those. Okay, so for 27, it has log, log, and then 2z equal to 3. And then the other one's a little bit more complicated, but we'll talk about it when we get to that one. For this one, I want to switch it. There's an issue here. There's no base. But we already know, just like coefficients and exponents, there is one. It's just invisible, right? What is it? It's 
10, good. And again, if you forget, that is written on the notes at the top of the tab, okay? It does say log base 10 is just the same as log, okay? I'll show you just for visual reference, right? It tells you this one right here. Log base 10 is the same as just LOG by itself, okay? So now that I have the 10 and I can see it, I'm gonna switch it. So this would be base 10, now with the three exponent and the two Z gets kicked out. Now 10 to the power three, I can type in my calculator. I believe it's a thousand, but I'm gonna go double check because my brain does weird things sometimes. Okay, yes, good. It is a thousand. And if I'm solving for Z, what do I need to do next? Mm -hmm. So then I get that 500 equals Z. Now, if I plug that 500 into this, will the argument be zero or negative? No, it's gonna be a thousand, right? So it's good. As long as it's a positive inside there, it's good. Now, 28 also does not have a base. It does though in disguise, right? What is the base in disguise on an LN? It's E. So, I can change the base on this one. I can change the forms. The only problem is, is if you remember the rule, there's no nothing else in front of it when you're doing that. It's just the log and then a number and that's it. And right now I have a negative three being multiplied by it and then this positive three being added to it, okay? So I need to get rid of this first. First, get rid of the stuff that doesn't have a log. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this three and I'm gonna minus three on both sides. So that gets rid of that three. And I have negative three ln of x equal to four. How am I gonna get rid of the negative three now? Mm -hmm. Divide by negative three on both sides, good. So then I just get ln of x equal to negative four thirds. Now I can remember again, this is an E, and since the log is all by itself now, I can switch. So this is going to be base E with this exponent equal to the X. And I can type that in my calculator. E raised to the negative four thirds. There's my calculator. And three decimal places would be two, six, four, right? The nine, which the, or the five will change the three to a four. That one's a good one. Um, let's go back there. So for here, I got 500. Oh, is this going to make my arguments negative? If I plug that back into here, is it going to be zero or negative? No, it was a positive 0.264, right? Okay, we're getting closer and closer to those long ones, the ones that are at the bottom. There's three of those long ones. Okay, okay. So let's see these two. Now, the one on the left, you have logs, but only on one side. And then there's a number all by itself on the other side. Okay. So for this one, you are going to have to switch the forms over. The issue is, is that it's only supposed to be one log equal to a number before you switch the forms. So I'm gonna have to combine these two logs into one log. Is it gonna have a fraction when I do that? It is, how do you know? Mm -hmm, that minus sign, exactly, good. So I'm gonna have a fraction 
And who's the one that's gonna go at the bottom? The X or the X plus two? Right, this is in front of this minus, this uh, argument. So then the X is positive, it's gonna go at the top. And now I could switch the forms over, but what's the base on an LN? It's an E. So when I switch the form, it's gonna be E to the fourth power equal to all this. And how do you solve any equation that has a denominator? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna multiply this side by X plus two and this side by X plus two, and it'll go away over here. And over here, I'm gonna distribute this E to the fourth. So I'm gonna get E to the fourth times X plus two times E to the fourth. And I have just an X here. It looks weird, but you have to remember that e to the fourth is just a number, just like any other number. So you wanna get all your x's on one side and then the guys that don't have an x on the other side. So I'm actually gonna minus this e to the fourth x on the other side. And this is where it gets weird. What do you get when you do one minus e to the fourth? I have no idea. Apparently it's that. See what I typed in there? Why did I do one minus that? Mm -hmm. This is one X, right? So I did that coefficient minus the other coefficient. So I get this many X's. I get negative 53.59 blah, 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 X. How do I solve for just the X? Divide by that ugly number, right? So we're gonna divide both sides by this ugly number. And for the calculator, I'm just gonna leave it in there. So I will get X all by itself, but I'm gonna do fraction two E to the four. And at the bottom, I want that in there, right? So I don't round it. And so if I want this answer in there, you can do the answer button down here. So I'm gonna do second and then answer. And it's gonna type in that previous answer. Just FYI. You could also just go up there and highlight it and hit enter, but it was in the wrong spot. Oops. I wish I had an undo button, but I don't I have to delete all this stuff. It's not gonna work like that because I was down here. And then when I tried to go up there, see how it puts it right there? It doesn't put it at the bottom. So you do have to use the answer button. I tried, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. So we get negative 2.037. This three is not enough to make that seven go up. So it starts to look real weird, but you have to remember they're just numbers. They're just ugly numbers. Negative 2.037. Okay, good. Oh, oops. Okay, now 30 is different. 30 has LNs on both sides, doesn't it? So I can use the one-to-one -one property. The only thing is, is that I can only use the one-to-one -one property if it's just one log equal to just one log. So I am gonna have to do the same thing again and combine those. And because of the minus, I am going to have a fraction again. So I'm gonna have X plus four at the top and the X minus three at the bottom. Then I'm gonna use my one-to-one -one and say that this argument has to equal the other argument. And just like before, if there's a fraction, you gotta get rid of that denominator, right? So we're gonna multiply this on both sides. I get X. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I, I have that problem wrong. And if I allow the computer to tell me, it's going to tell me that number 29 is wrong. What did I forget to do on number 29? I forgot to check it, didn't I? <laughs> 
will that make one or both of those arguments negative? It makes them both actually, right? But even if it just made one of them negative, it's a bad answer, okay? So this is actually not what I was supposed to type in the answer box because this is a bad answer. This makes at least one argument negative, which implies X does not exist. That's what you're gonna type in the box, D and E. I knew it was gonna happen. It had to happen at some point. <laughs> I have been checking them and then I forget on the one that it matters, right? It always happens to me. So this, I should not have typed it in there. And I didn't want you to type in D and E. What do they want you to type in? No solution. So I'm gonna scream it like they want me to. Um, Let's go back. I'm going to write no solution. I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, back to 30, right? We left off when multiplied by the denominator. And here it canceled, leaving me x plus 4. But over here, I then distributed it, right? but it's a quadratic, right? There's a squared in there. So I am gonna have to get it equal to zero. So let me move these guys over. And now we have zero, and then we have x squared minus four x minus four. Now, I do not think that we can factor that. I do not think we can. So either we're gonna get a decimal answer or we're gonna get imaginaries. Um, if we get decimals, we have to just make sure that they don't make these guys negative, okay? So I'm going to do the quadratic formula because I cannot factor that. So negative, negative 4 minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times A times C all over two times A. I'm going to get 16 plus 16, which is 32. Okay, it's not negative, so they're not imaginary, right? If it was negative inside, my answer would be no solution, okay? Because you can't have imaginary solutions to these. It tells you that the arguments have to be real and they have to be positive, right? But what I don't know is if these have negatives or positives and then if they check out or not. So let's go see what those two answers are going to look like. Fraction, 4 plus the square root of 32 over 2. And enter, but I want a decimal. So 4.828. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but with a minus sign decimal, I get negative 0 0.828. So is this one going to check out? Does it keep this argument positive if I plug in 4.8? Does it keep this argument positive if I plug in 4.8? And does it keep this argument positive if I plug in 4.8? Yeah. So this one works. What about this guy? If I plug in negative 0 0.8, is this argument going to be positive? It will. It'll be 3 point something, right? Will this argument be positive? No, it's going to be negative 3.8. And then definitely it's going to be a negative here, right? It's bad in two of them. So this one's not good. I'm only going to have one answer for that problem. Okay, I don't know why this problem's here. Should have been up at the top with the other ones that look like it. This is an exponential. I can solve it by switching the forms. I just can't do it yet because of the six. 
So how do I get rid of the six? Divide. So if I divide by that guy, I don't think that's gonna be a nice number. No, so I'm gonna leave it as a fraction. But when I switch it, it's gonna be log with the base E and then this fraction equal to the exponent getting kicked out. Remember, this is just an LN button. And then in order to solve this, you would have to start isolating the X. So the first thing I'm gonna do is minus seven on both sides. It's gonna become LN of 22 over six minus the seven but I'm still gonna have negative x. How do I get just x? Divide by negative what? Negative one, good, and the same on this side. And the cool thing about the calculator is it can put all of that in there. So if I go fraction, oops, fraction, ln of fraction, 22 over six, close it, and then I can hit minus seven in the top and at the bottom I can type in negative one. And it gives me 5.70, that seven will convert that to a one. But it does type in the whole thing. And the original did not have logs in it. So you don't need to check it, it should be good. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine of them left, and they're all these word problems. So we're gonna go for it. Hopefully we have enough time. We have like 20 minutes, but that may or may not be enough time. I'm gonna skip 33 just to save time. Um, I can make a separate video later if you want me to work out 33, okay? Um, but I think I want to concentrate on certain problems. I don't think I want to do 32 right now either. Just in case someone only watches this video and doesn't watch the secondary video, <laughs> I want to make sure I get all the important stuff, okay? So let me go through these. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so I want to do 35, and I want to do 36, and I want to do, no, I don't, I want to do 37. I want to do 38. No, I don't. And then 40 for sure. Okay, so I'm going to do the next four problems. I'm going to do our 35, 37, 39, and 40. If we have time to do the others, I'll go back and do the others in between. But if not, I'll make a separate video when I get back to my office right now and I'll do the rest of skipping over. Okay, because I think we're going to skip 36 and 38. Just not too many. Actually, we skipped this one too, right? So we're going to skip 32, 33, 34, and 36, and 38. So like I said, I'll make a whole nother video, okay? For right now, I'm going to write this stuff. So it says, uh, find the missing values, assuming that it's compounded, continuously compounded. When I see that word continuously compounded, your brain, or you should go look at the notes, but you need to be using this formula, okay? Now I'm gonna go back and get the information. So it says initial investment, that's the letter P. That's what the P stands for, is the initial investment. Annual rate is the R, and that's 8.5%. And then it's asking me two questions. It's asking me for the time to double, and then it's asking me for the amount after 10 years, okay? So let's go look at this here. 
If it wants to know the time to double, if it's doubling, then what is the A going to equal? If the original amount is 1,000, when that doubles, what is the A going to be? 2,000. So I'm going to be plugging in 2,000 for A, the 1,000 for P. E is just the number E. And R, do not type in 8.5, right? You have to try to decimal. So it has to be 0 0.085. If you want to put the zero in front of the dot, you can. That's an option, right? If there's nothing there, it's automatically a zero. But the T is what I'm trying to figure out. So I don't know what that guy is. I'm going to keep it as a T. This is an exponential. I want to swap the form over, but I can't because of the thousand, right? So we divide by the thousand. And we get two. Now, when I switch over the form, I'm going to get log base E, and then these are going to swap. Now, they really don't swap the sides of the equal sign because of the way it's written. But instead of this with the E, it should be the 2 with the E. And then the other number gets kicked away from the E. This is just the LN button. And how do you solve for T? divide by this decimal, whatever it is. So we get T is approximately, let's see, ln of two over this decimal. Um, what does it tell me to round two? It says round two decimal places. So then this would be 8.15. So that's for that. Now the second one asked me a different question. What does the second part ask me? It says the amount after 10 years. So I have to go back to this formula and I have to plug in the stuff that I know and leave the unknown. I'm trying to find the amount. So the A should stay in A. And since that's the unknown, everybody else should be plugged in, okay? So the P should be plugged in, that's 1,000. The R should be plugged in, which is 0, 8, 5. And even the T should be plugged in. And what is that? I'm finding the amount after 10 years, right? So that means that my T is going to be 10. And this is all numbers. So you can just type this in your calculator. 1000 E uh, 0 0.085 times 10. And I get 2339.65 because that six will change the four. And so you can fill in the box, you know, with those two. Make sure you put them in the right box on the computer. On the test, you just select the one that has those two answers, okay? Done. Number 37 is the next one I wanted to do. So number 37 says that the R is equal to 9%. It tells me it's compounded monthly. And it tells me that eight, no, 500,000 will be available for retirement in 12 years. So what that means is that the A is going to be 500,000 when the T equals 12. We round to the nearest cent. So why don't you want to open? There you go. So this is the info they gave me. Notice this one does not say the word continuously, right? If it says continuously, we use the formula with the E. If it doesn't say continuously, you have to use this formula. Okay. Okay. 
and it asked me to find the P. So apparently P is the only unknown. So if P is the only unknown, what is A? That's this guy, right? The 500,000? One, two, three. P I don't know, so I'm gonna keep as a P. This is just the number one. There's nothing to plug in for that. The R, we can't use this. We have to use 0 0.09. What is in? Yes, it says compounded monthly, which means that the N equals 12. So that means down here, I'm gonna have a 12 and even up in the exponent, you're gonna have a 12. Because in the formula, N appears twice, right? And T also happens to be 12, coincidental. Now this is all numbers, this part is. So you can plug all of that part in and see what you get. It's just gonna be some number. I don't know what number that's gonna be. Let's go look and see. Um, clear that out. So I have um, parentheses, one plus a fraction over 12, and then raise it to the 12 times 12. Get this decimal. Now I don't need to keep going. I'm just going to use it in my calculator, right? So how do you solve for P if P is being multiplied by this decimal? Divide. Right, just divide by that decimal. And the same thing on both sides. Now on paper, I can get away with doing the dot, 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 right? But in the calculator, I need to use that long version. So I'm going to take 500,000 divided by second negative symbol to get the word answer in there. So it's gonna take this answer and put it down there, which is exactly what we want, right? And we get 170483.41. So it's 170,000 that you have to put in. If it had said compounded continuously, the only thing would be different was this would be E and then the RT, but you would still be able to type that E to the RT in the calculator and you would still be able to get this decimal here and you'd still have to divide both sides, okay? Next one I wanna do is number 39. Thirty-nine says that the half life is five seven one five, and then over here on the side it tells you that the amount is four grams after a thousand years. So I'm gonna write that on my paper. So it says the half life is five seven one five, and then it's telling you that the amount was four grams after t a thousand years, right? So when T is a thousand. Half-life tells us the same kind of information. It tells us that, and I'm using A, but I really shouldn't be using A, I should be using Y. Because this is the formula. Okay. So the amount, normally that was A when we were doing the money problems, right? Now it's Y. And this was P, but now it's a Y not. It's literally the same formula, just different letters to represent the same stuff. But half-life means that the amount is going to be half of what you started with, okay? When the time equals that 5715, okay? So you basically have two bits of information, okay? We're going to use one and then the other, because what does it want? It just wants to know the initial quantity. So let's see if we can figure this out. So this information tells me, so H tells me that my equation is gonna be one half 
of the original amount and then e to the r, but the t is 5715. Now I do have an exponential. I want to switch the form, but I can't until this guy's gone. And because it's on both sides, when it goes away, it actually truly just goes away, right? You end up with one half over here and then this thing over here on the right. The why nots are just completely gone. Then I can switch my form. So it would be log base e and instead of this exponent attached to the one half it would just be a one half i mean sorry instead of this attached to the e it's not going to be the one half on the same side as the e that is an ln button and i just type the one half as a decimal and r times that number is just that number r but how do I figure out what just R is? Mm -hmm. By this 5715. So then I get R is what? Ln of 0.5 over, I get 0 0.00012186. That's as far as my calculator goes. So I'm gonna leave that alone because that's not what they asked me for. They asked me what was the initial amount. So this is what they're wanting to know. Have I found that yet? No, I've only found R, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use this R and the second bit of information that they gave me, okay? So when I do that, these two bits of info tell me that y is going to become a four grams y not is still the unknown e and i know what r is now one two three and then t is a thousand okay so this is just a number isn't it so let's see what we have four equals y not times some number what is that number? E, I'm gonna copy that in there. Yeah, I did it right. And then a thousand. And then to solve for why not, you're just gonna divide by that number on both sides. So I'm gonna do four over that answer. And I get that why not is about 4.516, oops, you can't see me. So if these go away, right, you get why not by itself, and then you have to type that in your calculator. Let's see how many decimal places it wants that answer though. It tells me to two decimal places. So I think I went too far. It should have just been 0.52. I literally have like four minutes to do this problem. Great. I think I'm just going to do it in the video because <laughs> it's going to take me longer than four minutes to do that. Okay. So all the ones that I didn't do right now, I'm going to record and there will be two videos. Okay. One we did in class and then the one we had is this. So if you want to see that other problems worked out, then go watch that one. Okay. Uh, today's Thursday, right? So I won't see you until Monday, the day of the test. So again, if you're in the face-to-face -face and you want to take the test online, let me know, okay, so I can add you to it. If not, just show up on Monday and I'll have the test for you, okay? If for some reason you don't show up on Monday, um, I'm going to add you to the online test anyway, okay? Okay, that's it. You guys have a good weekend. Please get your homework done. Please, please try to study, okay?
Mm-hmm.